Hey, good morning. Hey. How are you? I'm good. How's it going? I'm great, great. Uh, doing, doing, doing really well. Hey, uh, welcome everyone to the Penalty Box, uh, episode two. Um, we are very excited today to have a special guest uh, named Alan Bariz. Uh, tell you a little bit about him uh, before he comes in, but right now I want to talk to Eric a little bit and have our, our first segment, which is called the, the Shot on Goal. So, Eric, why don't you give us your shot on goal for today? So my shot on goal is, do you know the name Nathan, I want to pronounce it right, Nathan Apodaca. Do you know who that is? No, I do not. You do not. <laughs> nope. do, all right, do you know who 420 Dogface 208 is? <laughs> no. You do not? No, I do so not. Nathan is the gentleman on, on TikTok, uh, 420 Dogface 208, that did the video of him on the skateboard with the cranberry juice doing uh, lip syncing to the, uh, the song. Um, Fleetwood Mac song. Fleetwood yeah. Mac song, right? Yeah. yeah. And um, it's, it's something that, that obviously has been big on the news for the last week and it's been everywhere. This guy's amassed um, that video on TikTok has 61 million views, Tim. Wow. 61 million. It's got another 25 million, I believe, on Instagram. Uh, the guy has exploded. Um, he got a lifetime supply of cranberry grape juice. He got, <laughs> they gave him a new truck. Um, he now is on a video game with Cheech and Chong. Um, wow. He's selling merchandise. He's done a, 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 a commercial for KJ's Superstore, which is a chain. Um, this guy, this guy, and, and you know, he already had, I think about a million followers on, on TikTok anyway, but here's what I want to say about all that is this, is that we live in a world where 20 years ago, if you, if you had said, I think I'm good enough to be on live TV, or I think I'm good enough to do, do to do this, but you couldn't get in now you can. No kidding. This guy lives in Idaho. <laughs> Idaho. Think about that. Here's a guy who lives in Idaho. He does a video on a skateboard, and he's now monetizing this to some crazy numbers. Uh, and, and it's incredible. It's an incredible story. It's an incredible. Back to my point today about we all have an opportunity, and we all overthink things content and we all overthink you know what we're posting and what we talk about and you know what we've got to be us you, no you, doubt he was he was making those videos before he did that one and so we we, we are all unique in our own way we are all special in our own way we're all our own person and you never know when you do something silly like you know drink some some cranberry ocean spray and become 15 seconds famous and probably 60 seconds rich. Right. Right. So, so my that, question, that's my shot on goal. Well, my question to you on that is, uh, do you think that was planned? Um, and I've seen there's, there's a girl on TikTok who actually sings the Stevie Nicks part and she's blown up too. And I yeah. did see um, Jimmy, not Jimmy Kimball, Jimmy Fallon do a version and yeah. of he spilled it all over his face. Uh, it, uh, you, you know, you have really made it when even main street, mainstream media is uh, copying your uh, yeah. planned or unplanned, um, you know. Well, I think I think it was pl well. Well, so here's the backstory: his vehicle had broken down, so he was still trying to get to work. So while he's on his skateboard, on a longboard, you know, skating to work, he's doing some TikTok, and and like I said, here, you know. I, was it planned? I mean, it had to be somewhat planned because he just did it. But do you expect it to blow up to the point of today? It's at 61.5 million views on TikTok. No, no, no. And who knows? You know, he may fade and he will fade into obscurity. The money he made on this one thing may change, put his life in a different direction. You know, yeah. yeah, no, no doubt. Like I said, I, I think the point in it for me was is that we're all unique. And, and, you know, Todd Collins, who, who's a guy that I like, kind of a social media expert, you know, yesterday or today posted on LinkedIn that 
literally here's a guy with a phone who didn't overthink what he was posting. He, that's what he does. If you go right. back look at his videos, those, that's what he was doing every day before before this happened. And, and I I think just the the when you break it down to just what it is, <clears throat> but overthinking, right. Right. And, and I want to say this too for all the people that say, oh, TikTok in China. Da, da. I love TikTok. I can get lost in TikTok. TikTok is very creative, it's very uplifting. Um, there's some, you, I, I, even I can learn some, some dance. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> um, right. Uh, but there's some really cool stuff. And I'll tell you the other thing that I love about TikTok you see there are kids on there and they're very creative and yeah. very talented and right. tiktok is not the end of the world trust me um, you know and uh as you know for us older i'll just speak for myself you know older agencies we could learn you know just watching a couple tiktoks uh you can learn something that you know you're gonna laugh you're gonna laugh that you could bring into your business in some form or fashion oh there's no doubt we've got you know at, at perfect crust we've got several customers um frank at east village pizza in, in manhattan this guy's got a couple of videos at 10 and 12 million views on them it's crazy. Now, how, what does that equate to to business in the pizza shop? He doesn't know exactly, but he has had people come in and say, "I want this." Right, right. You know, and so so it, it, it's it's free advertising, and and so so anyway, I just wanted to shout out to to Nathan because I think it's an incredible story, and uh, that right. shot on goal. We can talk about it more if you want, but what's your shot on goal today? Well, my shot on goal today is a shout out to uh, COVID nineteen. Now, all right. All right. Now, not not the uh, not the virus, but the situations. All right. So I've got three top my top three COVID situations. Right. All right. Yes. So the first one is traffic. Now, living near a major city like Boston, um, it, you know, if you want to go into Boston and on a sales call, you have to go in before eleven. Uh, you know, uh, before you know, either before nine o'clock in the morning or after yes. eleven, and then you have to be out by two o'clock. Right. So that's the first one. My shout out is to traffic. I hope it stays the same. And who knows? It may because, uh, you know, more people will be working from home. What, my, what, my, I'm, I'm sorry. But what is a marshmallow concert on Fortnite? What, I know what Fortnite is, but what the heck is a marshmallow concert? I'm sorry. Squirrel. Uh, no, what's no, your no. second? What's your my second? Traffic, regarding COVID? Out, traffic out, number one. What's number two? Outdoor dining. So here yeah. in New England, you know, having, a, you know, finding a, a restaurant with a deck or even some outdoor seating um, has been really, really tough because local communities will be like, no, you're not, you, we can't have that. Now it is amazing. And I just hope that that stays. Um, and my third shout out uh, to the situation in COVID is the veterinarian. All right. So when you go to the veterinarian, you bring your dog in, of course, like every doctor's appointment, they're never on time. And then they bring you into a smaller room. It's like Dis Disney-esque, you know. We'll move you yeah. into a smaller room like Disney. And, and, and then they wait, you wait another half hour. I, I took my dog to the vet. They met me at my car. They brought my dog in. They called me with a question. Yeah. I answered the question. They brought him back out. They, call, they, called me, they called me for my credit card. I never left the car. I hope those three things in COVID, those situations stay. That's my shout out. Well, I just to touch on those, I I'm not leaving the house much, so traffic, yeah, you know, so it, it's fine. And I don't live in a giant, you know, I know you're not in a giant metropolitan area, but to get to Boston 30, 45 minutes away is gonna be kind of right. crazy. But um, regarding the patio dining, um, I'm in the restaurant industry. I'm, you know, there's a stat. I read an article two weeks ago. There's a stat that this guy predicts. 35 to 40 percent of restaurants, independent restaurants could close by the end of the year. And and he predicts that one of the big reasons for that is patio seating has been the fringe that's kept a lot of these people open. And what's going to happen is as it gets cooler, patio dining is going to go away. Uh, I don't know if you're aware of right now, but in, in America, one of the hardest things to find are outdoor patio heaters. Uh, they're not available at Lowe's. They're not available at Home Depot. Yeah, I didn't know that. No. Yeah, these restaurant guys are snatching them up left and right, and it, it's going to be um, it's going to be sad to see what happens over the next couple of months. You know, we get into November and and kind of as it really starts to get cold. I mean, you think about where you live, and if it's, are you going to want to eat outside on a on a heated patio that and it's thirty degrees outside, and right. so 
so we'll see. I, I, you know, like I said, I, I live in that space and, and I hope you're right. Um, so we, we will see. I will tell you regarding your third thing, because we have the same thing with our vet where you pull up and the dog, you know, they take the dog in and bring the dog and they call and all that stuff. And we have the same exact scenario. And our patterns, our buying patterns, our shopping patterns, our vet patterns are changing. And, and it's causing some people to really think about inadvertently they don't realize how the customer service is changing and, and things like what you're talking about, what you're describing, that stuff better stick. I love it. It, it has to stick. And, and so our, you know, our buying habits at our house have changed, you know, pretty much every trip to the grocery store is online and we, we pull up and we pick it up. And I mean, I got, uh, I got this in the mail yesterday from Walmart, free unlimited delivery to your house. That's crazy. That's and, awesome. Yeah. And, and I, you know, I, I ask a lot of pizza guys, you know, what good, what's, what's the silver lining in COVID. And, and for those guys, I think, cause it's, it's a different struggle than what I have or what you have. Um, they, they're hard pressed, but, but there are some, there are things out there. There are industries out there. Uh, you know, Kara Bariski that was on Sean Litvox live yesterday, you know, for her and her world, the economy is great. And, and it, we are staying home and we are spending money different. And uh, you know, I, there was, and this was a couple months back, but, but uh, um, Walmart had released some stats that when COVID had first started like two months in that the sale, the sales on shirts had doubled, but the sales on pants had dropped and we're sitting at home. You have you can see. I look. I could not be wearing pants right now. <laughs> I mean, I am, but you know what I'm saying. I mean, so yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't don't so, show. So, us, you know, don't show us either way if that's okay. Yeah, I, I would be curious. Um, you know, we've got people on watching. I'd be curious. You know, if you guys want to throw some comments in there. You know how how do you how is your customer service life change either where you work or things that you've seen because. I'm just telling you, I agree with you, Tim, regarding the vet. Like, how I don't want to go back to going in and sitting in that small room. And I pull up and you take, you do this. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. I love Cur it. Curbside, also, you know, in the restaurant industry, um, some people are still doing really well at curbside, but those are also people that really up their packaging game. They really up, 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 you know, really overdid themselves on it's not just putting stuff in a phone box, it's nice packaging. It's, you know, it's, it, it's just a different world. Um, Craig Gilbert said, I'm definitely not wearing pants. I'm wearing Red Sox boxers. That I'll take. That I'll take. Yeah, that's that's acceptable. That's Side acceptable. Down. Are you are yeah. you rooting are you rooting for the American League team or do you want to see Mookie Betts win a win a race? No, I I uh I hate the Rays. So I am definitely rooting for the Dodgers. Uh I've got a couple of friends that are Dodgers fans, and I would like to see Mookie win. Um, you know, that that would be okay. You know, ironically, I would like to see Mookie win, but I don't want to see Tom Brady win. Yeah, me either. Me either. So that's a that's a that's a next week. That's a next week shot yeah. for sure because uh, I yeah. love Tom Brady. But uh, I hey, Wes, can you put that comment back up from Randy? I'd like to see that again, please. The more virtual I've become, the more customer touches I get. It's proving out well. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I we're we're changing. We're evolving, and and the people in the business world that that are still waiting to get back to normal are going to be waiting a long time. Bam, no pants. Can't unthink that. The vet, I want to be in the small room with my dog. I, look, I, Paul, I, I think it depends on what it is. Like, you know, we had to drop, drop our dogs off for some shots. So, yeah, I mean, I mean, if your dog is uh, about to go in for surgery, uh, you know, uh, I'm a big dog guy. I've got three of them. Um, you know, I, I want to be there for some, you know, for shots or, you know, I'm, I'm good, yeah. with, I'm good with waiting in the car. Kellen, the question is, are you eating pop tarts? That's, that's what I want. So, <laughs> So All right. Not on goals. Yep. And, he, and Walmart is delivering to compete with Amazon Prime. No doubt, Dan. No doubt. So should we get our guest on here? Absolutely. Let's bring on in Alan Bariz. Alan, come on in out of the green room. There he is. Good morning. There he is. All right. So I want to do an introduction. Alan is the director of training for a company called Reflex Protect. And we'll go into that a little bit. And you can see that logo up behind him. He's also a certified fifth degree black belt in Hapkido. He is a former army sniper and instructor, an author 
And uh, if that's not enough, he is an attorney. I feel uh, like unaccomplished in my life. Every time I talk to you, Alan, welcome to the penalty box. Can Thank I, you guys for having me on. Alan, I want to ask you the first question. These guys, these guys really own that market. How do you feel like Reflex Protect is going to compete with Tums? I mean, what's your thoughts on that? <laughs> We're not a direct competitor with Tums. So I don't think we'll compete with them, but I think we will control the market for defensive sprays in the future, like their <laughs> category. Uh, Tim, what do you got? Well, uh, well, we all know, Alan, you are uh, you're an avid reader. And if everyone saw the, the, the graphic that we did, uh, the background for Alan's was a, a library. Alan, can you talk a little bit about um, your obsession with reading? I've always been an avid reader, even as a kid. I got out of it a little bit as an adult, and I read something by Jim Rohn in the 90s where he said, if you're not reading a couple books a week, in 10 years, you're going to be a 1,000 books behind. And I took that to heart, and I've been reading over 100 books a year since. And so let's make sure, and I've already read over 100 books this year. I'll probably read 120, 130 in this calendar year. Have you, uh, are you a subscriber to the Evelyn Wood uh, Speed Reading uh, Institute? No, I'm not. I've just always naturally been a fairly fast reader and I've been able to retain a lot of what I read too. So, Are they mostly uh, self-help books or are you a uh, sci-fi uh, uh, Harlequin romance type guy? Yeah, Harlequin romance type of no. <laughs> <laughs> I always have at least one novel going, and it's usually something Brad Thor, Lee Child, Tom Clancy in that genre. And then I'll have a biography going, a self-defense or martial art book going, a business book going, a motivational self-help book going. So I'll have a bunch going at the same time. And people say, how do you read more books at the same time? Just like when you're in college, you have multiple classes, multiple books you're reading. So that's what I do. But only one novel is in that group at a time. That's great. Eric, you're up. Yeah, I, I wanted to ask you what everyone wants to know. No, we're not doing that. We're not doing that, Randy. Have you ever driven a tank? I have not. I was an infantry paratrooper and then a scout sniper with a second ID. But I have ridden on a tank to catch a ride during some training missions. And one fun one was we were on a tank and it threw a track. And so the tankers come out all pissed off because they're going to get down in the mud to fix it. And all us infantry guys dropped off and said, thanks for the ride. We're out of here. We're <laughs> nice. <laughs> I was, what, when, so when you joined the service, and thank you, thank you for your service, how old were you? Were you straight out of high school? Like you, you graduated yeah. and were gone? I was 17 when, in a senior in high school when I signed up. My dad had to sign with me a delayed entry program, stipulating I had to graduate high school first. So as soon as I graduated high school in 1985, I had a month to play, uh, two months, because it was the end of July that I shipped out to go to basic training. Wow. Wait, okay. Was that something that had run in the family, was serving, serving your country, or was that just something you did on your own? So it had. My dad was retired Air Force, so he spent 22 years, two of those in Vietnam, uh, his stepdad, uh, two Purple Hearts and a Silver Star in World War wow. II. I mean, so it, it was in the family. And I you know really what happened is everybody thought I was going to go to college because I got good grades and everything. I watched First Blood. And I, after watching First Blood, I needed to go into the Army and jump out of airplanes and fire big guns and that kind of stuff. You've got about a minute and a half here. Can you talk a little more about Reflex Protect before we fire you out of the penalty box? Yeah, after I wrote my book, Survive a Shooting, I was introduced to this brand new company in 2018 called Reflex Protect. They had developed a defensive spray to compete with pepper spray because it doesn't cross-contaminate. It was designed for hospital use. You can spray it inside, stop a violent person, nobody else in the room, HVAC, everything not affected. I said, that's a game changer. That Christmas, the CEO said, do you want to bring your training with my company? I said, yeah, let's do that. So I joined with the company as a director of training in January of 2019, doing my active shooter trainings, my safety trainings, reflex protect specific trainings. 
And we've been helping hospitals, schools, churches, businesses, and now we're actually into law enforcement and they're taking off and liking it as they're less lethal because of the small cross contamination and the better decon. So I have a side question on that with the way the world is right now with the peaceful protests that are going on. It, have you guys seen an uptick in uh, crowd control for Re- Reflex Protect? We have because we were not in that market. We were specifically civilians until this spring. And then when COVID happened, schools and hospitals, you know, they're, they're shutting down and not really buying our product right now. But law enforcement started saying, hey, we want that. And so our law enforcement sales have really increased throughout the summer. And they've been using it effectively, stops violence. But when the person's retained, they can clean him up and stop the pain and be completely done really quick. So it's like, oh, he's gone. Oh, he really is gone. He just, <laughs> man, Wes just fired him right out of there. <laughs> he, he is going to, he's going to throat punch us for that for sure. Oh, no kidding. No kidding. So gonna, if, you're, if you're watching, that's what happens when you're in the box and your five minutes is up. You're, you're gone. You're gone. What are you? What are you, what are you uh, doing there? Oh uh, yeah, the UPS just arrived. That, that's a live. That's live TV for you. Yeah. Uh, See, I, I I thought for sure Tums. I thought he was going after the Tums market with Reflex. Well, I want to let everyone know that 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 uh, that was planned, but not planned. Uh, we have Alan coming back uh, for a uh, for an overtime. Um, a deeper dive in, in a few minutes. So Alan, we're, we're sorry that we didn't get a chance to uh, let you promote yourself a little bit, uh, but uh, we will. That will be the question we ask you in the overtime is how do people get a hold of you? Uh, so uh, yeah, Alan's quite an amazing guy. I, I'm uh, like, we we're part of a mega line group that met back in June and uh, er- Eric has the best line of all, you know, Aaron, Alan, you, you, you scare me. So. You scare me. He does. He's scared. He, he, I'm glad he wasn't in Kansas City. He probably would have throat punched the crap out of me. So. Well, now, now he's going to probably drive to wherever wherever Wes lives. And, uh, you know, Wes, I'd be looking over your shoulder for the next week or so. <laughs> yeah, I'm, Alan, sorry. Blame Wes. All right, Timmy, what do you think? Who do you got in the World Series? I got the Dodgers. Uh, I probably and this. I've got the Dodgers with a caveat. I, I like Mookie Betts. I wish he'd never left Boston. I wish they paid him whatever they whatever he wanted. I think he really wanted out anyway. Um, and the caveat is, I'm not going to watch a single inning. <laughs> I won't. I probably won't watch much either. I don't think. Um, you know, I like Clay, Clayton Kershaw. I don't even know is David Price pitch for them this year. I don't think so. I don't I think so. I didn't know he had, but love Mookie Betts and would love to see him win a ring. Um, and we can talk about Tom Brady uh, next week. But the uh, Patriots, I, you know, Patriots should be four and one. Four and one. Yeah, could be four and one e- easily. I mean, a couple of a couple of plays and they're four and one. And so, so yeah, before before we uh, kick off, I. I uh, I get notified every time Bill Belichick has a press conference. And so I, I watched a little bit of it this morning and uh, you know, that guy, <laughs> he had his mask up to here, you know, it was black and uh, he was one word answering everyone, man. He probably looks at his contract every single time that he uh, signs it. And it says, you have to talk to every, the media every single day. And yeah. he's like, add a comma to that. And I will. So. Yeah. By the way, Kara just said, go Tampa Bay. Kara, I take back anything nice I said about you. It's all, <laughs> it's all, it's all gone. So, well, let's pull uh, Wes in here and uh, and see if Wes has got any comments today. And, and Wes, how are you? Producer extraordinaire. If you want to host your own live show, this guy here, I can't do it. this guy here, uh, Wes is your guy. It's, it's very inexpensive. He's amazing. Um, he will probably, you know, dive the goatee even darker. Um, so if you need a live producer, he's your man. So Wes, any thoughts on, on today? What do you got? Well, I would just like to invite Alan to my house. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, no, no, just kidding. Uh, no, no, uh, no thoughts whatsoever. I just cut I... the end of my thumb off. <laughs> I'm not joking. <laughs> <laughs> he's not, he's not just, see, that's what you get for messing with Alan. Are you bleeding or what? Uh, no, but I did. Uh, I, I took the end of it off. So, Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. Good thing the uh, our, our fine sponsor, Woodstock Inn Brewery, there. Yeah. 
your dedication to uh alan's uh first blood uh reference uh, is is uh is amazing so thank you for drawing first blood here right. on in the penalty box yeah shout well, out to uh, the woodstock inn and brewery up here in new england uh you know the foliage is almost peak but skiing is right around the corner and they just released their their fall beers that they are awesome if anyone knows if you know you know head up there, there you go. well you want to talk about next week's uh, guest and we'll get out of here and come back and do the ot with uh with uh alan yeah sure uh so next week we have uh jesse the machine green uh jesse is the uh the official chainsaw artist for Haskavana. he is uh he was a star of the nat geo series called american chainsaw and he was just given an honorary arts doctorate uh, uh, for, uh, for college here in New England, and he's the lead singer of a heavy heavy metal band. He is a hoot, so do not miss that. And that's on Thursday. It's on Thursday uh, next next uh, next week, uh, the 29th. Yeah, exactly. Awesome, awesome. All right, fellas. Well, let's get out of here, and we'll record the OT and post that a little later. But thank you for watching today, Wes. Thank you for uh, cutting your thumb off with the same knife you used to shave your head. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Tim, as always, it's good to see you, sir. You guys, be incredible. Thank you. All right, be incredible. Have a great day.